Hi, good evening to all of you. And uh, with the permission of uh, our guest and everybody else, let me uh, begin today's evening session. And uh, let before that, let before uh, uh, Dipali takes over the, uh, the forum, let me have the pleasure of introducing the today's guest of honor, Dipali Nayam. I'm sure uh, you know when this topic was announced, a lot of mails have come uh, to us saying that they're all looking forward to this uh, uh, session from all of our participants across the programs. And uh, thank you so much, Dipali, and really, uh, I'm absolutely amazing to host you. And uh, just to give you a background about, I'm sure in, before that, in fact, uh, all of you must have seen her the LinkedIn profile and also the kind of, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the achievement that she has had in the illustrious career, almost about now uh, uh, 30 years, right, start, having started her career in 1993. And then if you have seen her profile, I think it's like almost like a dream, uh, like a career for any marketing professional. And uh, she has started her career as a senior officer in um, one of the finest brands in the world, definitely in India, that is Tata Motors. Of that, she has had amazing career with different brands. To call out some of them, she was a manager of marketing at BPL Communic Mobile Communication. Of that, she was a group head accounting planning uh, uh, at FCP Ulka, where she was there for uh, three years uh, close to. And then marketing manager at Marico. Of that, she uh, became a leadership position. She was uh, the vice president and head of marketing at HSBC Asset Management, uh, India Private Limited. And she was also the country head for a, a brand customer service and e-commerce at l and General Insurance Company Limited between December 2009 and September 2013. And uh, after that, she had the pleasure of become, being the CMO of the chief marketing officer at uh, Mahindra Holidays and Resorts India Private Limited between 2013 October and December 2015. After that, she was a chief marketing and digital officer at IAFL uh, investment uh, uh, managers between October 2016 and September 2018. And uh, after that, she also became the non-executive board member at this uh, uh, one of its group companies called IAFL Wealth Finance between uh, April 2017 and uh, September 2018. And uh, uh, before uh, uh, that, I think uh, you know uh, after all this, you know she was. Uh, Right now, or she's right now the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer for IBM India and Asia, uh, South Asia. And most importantly, the kind of achievement that she has had uh, over her illustrious career, including uh, being the CMO of the year by ET uh, in 2020. And uh, the Impact Magazine has been, uh, uh, I think, for almost about five to six years, continuously, consecutively, I would say, has been uh, rating her as uh, one of the most influential marketers in the country. And uh, she also is featured in uh, Business World's uh, India's Most Influential uh, Marketing Leaders. And Sky India's um, you know, uh, has rated her uh, one of the top 15 social media superwomen of uh, India. And uh, most importantly, she is also, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, serves as adjunct faculty, a visiting faculty at some of the financial institutions. She is also the podcast host. She's a governing council member at uh, IAMA which is the apex body for advertising uh, industry in the country. And then she's also advisory council member at uh, three very illustrious institutions. One is SBJMR, where she had the pleasure of uh, being a visiting faculty for almost 17 years. I cannot fathom how she would manage all of this. And then I know from other sources that she's also rated as the, the finest faculty in that area. And then she's also the advisory council member at one of the new age business schools that has come up uh, in Bombay uh, uh, for you know, uh, carrying on its last legacy, and that is Bitsom. And uh, also she's an uh, advisory council member at NIDMA University. And with uh, so many hats that she wears, I, I, you know, I think one of you should ask her as to how does she juggle uh, uh, different roles uh, between her busy career. Most importantly, the kind of uh, difference that she'll make to do all the companies that she has worked with and continues to uh, uh, you know, influence a lot of people even though she has left those companies and uh, she has become a mentor to thousands of students and also many many employees in the country over to you uh, 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 Deepali and before that I just have a small protocol to all the participants and that is that as and when you have questions please do put that in the Q&A and not in the chat box so that it becomes easy for us to pick up and then uh, relay that question to the Bali towards the end of her presentation. And we'll try to accommodate as many questions as uh, you know she can permit, uh, given her uh, you know, the, the, the positive time. Over to you, the Bali. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Nagendra, for that uh, you know very nicely, succinctly put introduction. And uh, you know, uh, I I think life just happens. Uh, you know, and uh, when you've lived for as many years as I have. 
uh, I think the accolades and uh, the opportunities come your way. Uh, but yes, uh, I do drive myself hard, you know, and I think uh, that's the crux of the whole, uh, you know, point. Uh, maybe in a way, uh, what I'm going to introduce to the students today uh, is a crux of so many years of learning that I've had, uh, you know, in marketing. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Uh, I thank uh, you know, the organizers for this opportunity to be talking to you. And just like you've heard from a lot of people, I've definitely heard from a couple of people saying, hey, you know, Dipali, you're doing this session, it's on my alumni group, you know. So uh, I've also, I've also received that, you know, on uh, 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 one of the IM groups, I think I'm indoor, I received it from the XLRI alumni group, I received it from, um, you know, a couple more uh, people telling me, okay, great. And so I have about, this is 6.08, I think, so I have about uh, 20 to 25 minutes, you know, where I want to talk a few things to you guys, okay? But, uh, you know, I also want to tell you a few stories before I get to the framework that I want to talk about, which, you know, succinctly captures, uh, you know, what I have learned. We are a product of our, uh, you know, upbringing. Uh, we are a product of, uh, uh, you know, the experiences that we've had in our, uh, you know, uh, life. And uh, the belief, uh, you know, the important belief in my life has been that what got me here won't get me there. So therefore, you know, learning is a very, very strong feature, you know, in my life. Uh, but I want to tell you a few stories to tell you what kind of marketing experiences shaped my thinking. You know, and I thought of a few lovely anecdotes for you to realize that how life was when I started working versus how life is today, you know, and the journey that you've had as a marketing brain, uh, as a marketing person. You know, my earliest memory uh, is from my second job, which used to be BPL Mobile. It was a startup. It was just a 35 member company when I joined it. And I, you know, one of my uh, long lasting memory is that I used to be the brand head and the market research head. Okay. I was a young person, junior in the team. Uh, and I used to also outdoor advertising used to be one big thing in the mobile phone industry in those days, because you had these local territories and so local edition of the newspapers and the outdoor was one big thing. You know, in Bombay, we used to use the bus shelters. I remember that I used to go to Ray Road and approve all the hand painted bus shelters. So, you know, from a technology perspective today, everything gets printed, you approve everything online. I used to actually go and approve the previous night, all the bus shelters that used to get painted. I used to remember, so the BPL logo had a blue and a yellow rim and a red. I would remember the exact shade number okay, from Goodless Nerolac and from Asian Paints, which would match my logo color when it would go up on the, uh, you know, uh, bus shelter. So those were the days, you know, one of the earliest memories, something that you guys uh, will only now, uh, you know, see in history of marketing books, you know, your life is never going to be like this. No, my, my uh, second memory is, um, you know, from my uh, Marco days, you know, and I've done a lot of journeys in between, lots of interesting stories there also. But I think Marico is where I really learned, uh, you know, the PNL management. And therefore, you know, I want to talk to you. So there is a brand called Medicar that uh, Marico had bought from PNG. It was Medicar Shampoo. Uh, very solid franchise, does the numbers every year, gross margins are very good. And we were, but we wanted to extend the franchise and increase the uh, user base. Um, it is a shampoo for lice. Some of you will not identify with this unless you have children in the school going age group, you will not identify with, you know, medical shampoo. And uh, Marico has a history of being very good at hair oils. So therefore we thought of launching, you know, medical uh, hair oil. Uh, when we did the initial studies, we realized that it's going to cannibalize the main franchise, the shampoo franchise, you know, but our estimate was that it would also uh, you know, eventually expand the oil franchise. It's a very scary thing for a marketing head, brand head, the CEO of the organization, for everybody to do that you are launching a product which will cannibalize a bit and will, you know, whether it will extend or not, you know, you may have done pilots, you may have done product testing, but it's ultimately a very scary thing to do. And I think that's my one of my earliest memories that six months, you know, of when I launched the trepidation, the going and checking of the numbers every day to see 
the shampoo is decreasing but the hair oil is increasing when do you reach a point you know where uh, from a 20 crore brand you know i become 22 or a 23 and a 24 and then you know we landed at about 27 crore brand uh, you know at the end of nine months when it was all stable when you realize that you know listen you've actually managed to expand the franchise your shampoo revenues may have come down but your hair oil hair oil revenues in the medical brand have actually gone up you know so that's my um, you know journey of you know being familiar with the numbers so somewhere when you reach the mid management and the senior management level you know uh, that's starts becoming important uh, then my other memory uh, HSBC was something that I came back to after my break and then after that I joined l and insurance when it was a startup again I was the 12th employee that l and insurance hired um, you know we were in the general insurance space which meant auto health commercial insurance um, and there uh, you know I was uh, both brand and marketing head and also e-commerce head what is called the D2C channel I literally built that channel from scratch uh, the first six months our CRM capabilities were not ready we used to run the numbers on an excel sheet and um, uh, the the Marwadi genes that I have and the Marwadi blood that I have felt very good that you know eventually I left the company and you know the business got sold to uh, you know HDFC um, but the excel sheet format that I had built for reporting you know which used to report into me they did not change it for seven eight years it was such a sturdy stable reporting format uh, you know even even when the crm system came later that format was used to still do the internal reporting you know in terms of how to look at the numbers how to look at the daily business weekly and ensure that we meet our numbers and i have that good reputation of meeting my numbers and meeting my targets uh, uh, you know in those days i think the transition that you must notice from here is from brand and logo and branding you know to this hardcore number bit that came and imagine the world and the landscape of marketing had changed you know my first 10 years is strictly about brand communications consumer inciting you know, all that you know of as a glamorous world and then the digital marketing happened and uh, the performance marketing bit happened and therefore marketing became all about numbers and deliveries and you know things like those at Mahindra holidays for example the success was all about the fact that when i joined the lead set marketing used to hand over to the field sales team but used to come at a certain cost you know within nine months uh, me and my team and the new agency we brought the cost down from uh, you know let's say 100 to 33 rupees i'm not i'm giving you index numbers that's not the value but you know one third and the overall volume of sale uh, uh, you know went up uh, tremendously we we used to contribute about seven percent of the overall sales we went to you know contributing about 17 percent how has this happened you know i always i always wondered and i said you know uh, how has all this happened uh, a lot of the times i get asked this question saying uh, you know dipali how did you transition i'm one of those rare marketing professionals who with every job change has also moved industries you know when i was working for hsbc mutual fund i never felt like working for another mutual fund i said i've always treated everybody else's competition i can't go and join the competition now you know you know when i worked for marico i don't think i'll ever go and work for another hair care you know a brand you know you you've kind of treated them as competition so that's been the thought in my head uh, you know uh, and in my mind so people always ask me this question it i get asked this question very often saying okay how did you transition from automobiles to mobile phones uh, to fmcg uh, i looked after sephora also so cooking oil hair oil uh, hair oil and then i transitioned to being in financial services where i did mutual funds i did insurance i did mahindra holidays which is a very different timeshare brand and then you know at ifl i did uh, you know uh, it was personal wealth uh, you know management space and then now i'm in a technology brand so all very different you know, at the heart of it, I realized that I have, you know, after reading the greats, you know, which is, let's say, whether marketing myopia, Theodore Levitt or brand uh, or the, you know, David Arker's uh, uh, building strong brands. And I'm, I'm a big, big, big fan of David Arker and that framework, you know, that he has. I realized that, you know, uh, when you move from category to category, uh, there is some sim simple framework that you also develop. And I want to talk about that. I have, uh, you know, I call it the three A's framework, okay? And uh, let me just uh, uh, share with you, uh, you know, what this three A's of framework is. I have two slides very quickly. I just want to, uh, you know, share those uh, with you. Uh, so remember, it's the three A's. Um, and uh, 
I hope my screen will be visible to all of you now. Um, and here's your slideshow format, right? So the three A's really is authenticity, agility, and ability. Okay, I hope the third corner is also visible to all of you. It's not to me because I'm sharing screen. I'm going to stop sharing this and I want to spend some time talking about what does this word authenticity mean, agility mean, ability mean, but to me and in my framework. But what I also want to share with you is that to me, when I reflect back on my life and the brands that I worked for and the organizations that I worked for, or even if I look at some people brands or my own brand, very limited, I'm a very Chotu niche brand, uh, you know, admirable, let's say possibly in the marketing fraternity. Uh, but whether it's a person brand, organization brand, um, uh, or uh, the marketing team uh, brand, uh, you know, this framework has what has helped me when I reflected back uh, uh, on what has happened. So let me explain these one by one. The first one that I've mentioned is authenticity. Okay. Authenticity is at the heart of marketing. You know, it's also at the heart of brand purpose and voice. Um, we can I tend to refer to this whole authenticity bit as the art of marketing, you know, that brand logo design color and voice and, you know, all those things. Authenticity also, apart from that part of the brand, you know, design and identity, it leads to customer centricity and creativity inside an organization, inside a marketing team. You know, it is the A, authenticity is the A which guides the marketeers to develop, uh, you know, the brand purpose. And, you know, this is the one that I think presides over the piece of marketing or the framework that David Acker has, you know, in terms of filling that uh, framework, you know. If you're a personal brand, you know, if you're an Oprah Winfrey, if you are, a, 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 I don't know, Steve Jobs, if you're a personal brand, then this is the A which is most important, you know, uh, and therefore when the word authenticity, of course, means being real, right? So what you are in real life should be exactly the same, for example, as you're on social media, and that's what matters, you know, for a personal brand. But I think it's true uh, for company brands also, you know. Um, and uh, let me give you another example, you know, how it reflects in a brand's life. So when I, I mentioned to you LNT insurance, right? Uh, one of the mottos that we had internally that we used to live by was, you know, under promise and over deliver. Okay, that's the kind of brand we were going to be because we had culled out that LNT, the parent brand also stands for that, you know. And uh, what this meant, you know, when we looked at the whole customer experience creation that we were doing, not just the advertising, our advertising was also led by this tenet, by the way, but, you know, the customer experience that we were creating, this meant that you need to be specific, you know, you were not going to be vague, you know, to your customers, right? Uh, so this meant that our customer service executives would not say that your insurance policy would reach you shortly. Okay, this meant that they would say that it will reach you in eight days, you know, they will not say four working days because you know that's when you start creating ambiguity. Okay, but they would say eight days and most of the time the policy would actually reach our customers in four to five days or max it took seven days, but the commitment was eight days and therefore, you know, we over delivered. And that's, you know, that's the brand we were. And we did this very strategically. We knew that it does not matter to the customer um, that, you know, it reached them in eight days or even 10 days. We could have promised them even 10 days. But when you say shortly, then people just imagine everybody's shortly is or soon can be one day or 10 days or four days or five days. So being specific matters and, you know, under promising and over delivering matters. Just an example of what and how you need to look at, you know, authentic brands and how it becomes, you know, an experience and uh, is a cornerstone of creating the experience for the customer, you know. Um, it was the same authenticity, you know, in uh, once again in l and Insurance where, uh, you know, those were the days in 2010-11 when everybody thought that you ought to have a Facebook page and you need to have a community and, you know, people will follow you and stuff like that as a brand. And when, uh, you know, uh, 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 when this discussion came up in l and Insurance saying we ought to have a Facebook page, I said no, you know, and, you know, the reason for that was that I don't think we had much to say to our community on health insurance on Facebook, you know, Facebook is a very different kind of a medium. What are you I mean, and we didn't want to indulge them like how others were doing in creating some me too content and copying somebody else. So we said, it's okay to not have the community page on Facebook, you know. Uh, so it's a different, you know, 
it's a different matter that we understood the intent of why being on social media or how to do community creation or what kind of messages to do and we may have found different medium uh, you know different media to serve that purpose that's all right you know but uh, it's about knowing you know how to be uh, authentic so i think all of us with these two examples and with what i'm saying instinctively understand and if we are marketing students then we do so i'm not going to belabor it i want to you know uh, 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 just belabor one more point like I stood up and I said, no, we're not going to have a fa Facebook page and it's a contrarian thought, you know. Uh, do you have the courage to be authentic? Do you have the courage to say what's good and what's not good? You know, that's extremely important. You know, so just remember that. Now, let me move to the other tools. I had said agility and ability. Okay. These, according to me, are the newer pillars. And I, when I reflect on my work, I think these have come up more in the last uh, seven to ten years. This is what I call both of them the science of marketing. So authenticity leads the art of marketing. This is what I call the science of marketing. Uh, and I, there is a quote by, uh, you know, Jeff Jones. He was the CMO of Target. You know, he given this quote. Uh, I'm picking up one by one. So I'm picking up agility first. You know, very typical definition. If you tell a eighth standard student saying agility means what? They're going to refer to agility as speed or velocity. You know, typically and that those are the errors. But we understand, you know, that there's a nuance to it, you know, and he's from the marketing perspective. He says, technology has completely changed what fast means, you know, and we are on an agility mission right now because the speed, you know, uh, is different than agility. Why he says that. So speed is there, of course, you need to be nimble, you need to be, you know, quick to pivoting and stuff like that. But what does agility mean? It means that we're trying to, uh, he carries on and says, you know, what we're trying to build is the capability to go in new directions fast, you know? So it's a capability to go into new directions for, fast, not just go straight ahead fast in one direction. And that's a very different muscle for us to build. Why? Because, um, you know, uh, we don't know how the world of future is going to be. We can't predict. So we need to have teams, organizations, brands, who can pivot fast into these new directions as they are coming at us, you know. It is therefore about being comfortable with constant change, uh, you know, which has primarily been brought on with this whole societal and technological changes that have happened. So technology changes impact societal changes also, you know. So agility is about our ability to imagine the future perhaps and then pivot very quickly, okay. It is about the culture of evolution, according to me, within the marketing team, um, you know, so one of the questions that I always ask people when I'm addressing them when they are in the marketing or the business domain is, how agile are you as a marketing person? How agile are you as a CMO? How agile are you as a leader? You know, are you really comfortable with change? You know, um, and that's where I refer to this quote, Marshall Goldsmith wrote a book saying, you know, what brought you here, what got you here won't get you there, right? And he's telling you to change every moment and that, you know, don't sit on the formula of your past success, you need to do things new. If I had copy pasted the same things that I did at IFL Wealth, uh, you know, at IBM, it wouldn't have worked. I needed to rewrite, uh, you know, what new, what, what innovation, uh, you know, what new things to do, right? Uh, so evaluate yourself constantly as a marketing professional and also ask yourself, are you therefore learning this new world of marketing? It's very different. I told you the BPL mobile example, you know, I should be a dinosaur by that standard, but I'm not, you know, um, and uh, the, one of the proof of the pudding of why I'm not a dinosaur. And this is sometimes I have to prove it to myself, right? Uh, that all content creators, podcast hosts, this whole new technology thing, content marketing, everybody these days, in fact, says reverse mentoring, we should get done by the younger guys, right? And my whole mind mindset is about that why can't i learn the new things and master those and my enough years of experience of knowing the basics you know uh, knowing the basics of customer centric centricity and knowing the principles of strategy and execution should help me actually do better even in this world so you know i launched the podcast in uh you know june last year being ceo with the pali nair i really request you to check it out because your, uh, your you are mirroring the target audience profile that we have for this podcast and i've got fantastic feedback uh you know on the content it's a huge success the numbers show it to us uh you know 59 percent retention rate at the 27th episode i finished 30 31 the 27th episode had uh, 27 cumulatively one to 27 episodes had 59% retention rate. You know what that means? 
that means that out of every every 100 people who are coming and listening to the podcast 59% are listening to every single episode fully okay and this has been achieved without spending a single rupee on marketing for the podcast so this is true success of content marketing the strategy is mine editorial rights are mine format is all mine right and therefore i've also got you know content creator awards the podcast has won an award i'm i'm the i'm the first female uh, podcaster in the business domain you know in india but what was very important to me was to succeed you know when that list of 25 uh, you know women professionals i was listed as a 25 top content creators in asia pacific okay when that list came and i was quoted over there i saw every other person was under the age of 35 okay i was i was the only person in the 40s over there and i felt very proud of that you know that i'm not i'm not the gen z in the millennial and you know every other person is a gen z or a millennial in that uh, in that list you know so this this whole learning thing and agility therefore is extremely uh, uh, you know important so it, it it proved to me that i'm comfortable with this uh, you know a uh, uh, new world right um so you know, just like I spoke about this, you know, I want to just again say as a brand or an organization, you would be agile if you have the ability to pivot by changing customer needs or changing global circumstances, you know, um, um, just a dipstick that you should either ask yourself a question or do a dipstick. How quick were your organizations in adopting the work from home? or the hybrid model of working, you know, or are you ready for the gig economy? Do you know how to cost a job, which you're going to give to somebody who's a jobber, you know, within the marketing team, think about it. And while doing this, you still need to do uh, still need to deliver peak performances, right? So, uh, you know, uh, ask yourself that if your team was to do time travel into 2025, which is only three years ahead of us, you know, are your teams going to be successful because they've done the same repetitive task over and over again and have become efficient or they've run the same similar campaigns or are they successful because you know they innovate and succeed against all odds also fail sometimes but the successes compensate for the failures you know are they resilient enough to pick themselves up and get to it again when they fail you know uh bottom line is do you think of the future and feel scared or do you think of the uncertain future and want to run into it and embrace it? Now, this may sound like leadership talk, but this is extremely important in marketing because marketing has always led the rest of the teams, rest of the functions inside an organization into innovating, into doing things new, into knowing what is changing about the customer, right? So at a personal level, uh, I remember what I said, I feel comfortable, I've done it. So I have all the right voice of authority, you know, to give you this, uh, this nugget, because I've done it by, you know, uh, heading marketing for consumer goods, financial services, hospitality, technology, you know, also in startups and in MNCs, um, you know, so, uh, uh, and if you want a little bit of another tip for yourself to judge yourself, you know, uh, whether you're a, a CMO or a brand manager, you know, ask yourself, do you say no to new ideas? Or do you always say yes and then work towards making it happen, you know? And I must say, therefore, that I'm uh, quite proud of the team at IBM. I think we did an extraordinary uh, great job in pivoting, uh, you know, when uh, uh, COVID hit us. Um, we were the first, I think, uh, team anywhere in the world in IBM, of course, but even otherwise, who did a full-fledged virtual event in the month of February. COVID actually hit us in March. Okay, in Feb, we had done a 7,500 people event, virtual. We didn't know COVID was coming. It's just that when we were doing our annual planning, and IBM has a Jan to December year, when we were doing our annual planning and we were sitting in the month of October, we said the world of future is going to be about virtual. So let's attempt it. That's where the thought had come. And therefore, when we actually had to do it, we were ready and we taught the rest of the world. We got awarded very well inside the IBM uh, uh, you know, marketing teams and, uh, you know, so on and so forth, right? So uh, this was a data and AI forum done. And we when we did it, when we started planning it, we'd not heard the word, uh, you know, Corona, like I said, right? So uh, this is on, uh, uh, you know, uh, agility, right? I, I, it is about, you know, being prepared for uncertainty, being comfortable with the idea of ambiguity, not just change, 
ambiguity you know and feeling yet feeling confident you know is uh, is very important right and the last a now okay uh this is uh, ability okay this one is really about adding skills on one side ability is about human skills which of course is one of those learning frameworks and learning data and learning all the new things that are coming you know whether it's learning social media or learning facebook or learning instagram all those things and on the other side ability is also about the tools of marketing it's a need of enhancing that ability that nudges marketing towards, for example, adoption of Martech solutions. I call the Martech solutions the new brains of marketing, and you know, I don't. I, I think there's some some couple of thousands of uh, Martech solutions that exist today, and this proliferation has happened only in the last ten years. You know, um, I think a recent Gartner studies uh, which was done uh, said that one third of the CMOs budgets is going to be uh, going into buying and usage of marketing technology. Um, you know. Uh, yeah, and I think a couple of thousand number that I was mentioning, if you look at chiefmartech.com and you must should read that blog, uh, it's run by Scott Brinker and I really admire him. He's a friend. I recently, you know, brought him to IMAI's, uh, uh, you know, event. There are about 8,000 Martech solutions which are vying for attention of the market here. And these have come only, like I said, uh, you know, in the last, uh, uh, you know, 10 years. Um, these Martech tools, so I already, we are discussing ability, right? So one is, of course, enhancing yourself. Second is enhancing your team's ability through the Martech tools. Um, uh, very important, why? Because there's been digital transformation of businesses, digital customer experiences are very important. They, they can only be enabled through the Martech solutions. And last and very important, the ROI demonstration is extremely important, uh, you know, through these Martech solutions. Uh, just one second, my son's walked into you okay, haven't. we are live, Krishna. Just no, give me a moment. Still haven't fixed my bathroom. Don't care if they call me before. They heard that. I oh. don't care. Okay, so my son's being a little difficult on a Saturday evening. Okay, I, we spoke about the Martech when, star, when stack and the Martech solutions. Uh, they've, like I said, they've grown dramatically in the uh, recent years. Okay. This is about work from home. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Actually, we are stealing their space, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> no, I could have, you know, Anyway, that's a separate discussion, yeah. right? Uh, I think I was just making this point that the Martech solutions, which is very important. And the last thing I want to say about the Martech solutions and marketing is that marketing needs to play the role of now the integrator of the rest of the functions because somebody needs to own customer experiences across. And marketing team is not the only one who's creating uh, marketing experiences. So your Martech solutions, which aid uh, uh you know customer experience creation need to work well with the rest of the organization which means that from a technology perspective also the total total technology stack of the business needs to work well with this this also means by the way not just your own company systems but uh you know the ecosystem that you have for marketing you know your service providers you know they also need to be on board so um, uh, the whole ecosystem needs to uh, uh, become better uh, I think the last bit that some of you might even end up asking questions me on is the uh, skills, the ability part of the skills uh, and what new skills will be important. Um, I can tell you what are currently important. So analytics, CX, UX, content creation, content marketing are the, uh, you know, hot skills. Um, uh, what I see very uh, often also is that sometimes I'm recommending to other CMOs that they must reorganize the marketing team. Uh, you know, uh, depending on how the need of the uh, business and need of the marketing has changed and align the KPIs of the marketing team with the ROI that they need to deliver inside marketing, there should not be a mismatch that, you know, skill set and right uh, uh, skilling and right job really uh, needs to matter. So, I mean, if you're asking me for tips there, then ask yourself is the marketing team's org structure ensuring that the team acts as unifiers for the rest of the organization will this new structure enhance for example data driven decision making within marketing and the rest of the organization you know do the kpis that marketing have apart from roi do they ensure growth mindset you know does the org structure that you are developing ensure agility 
you know ensures authenticity also uh, so that's also the ability part of the uh, marketing uh, you know organization so you know the mantra of authenticity agility and ability will guide you in balancing the art and science of marketing um you know uh, i'm just going to tell you that if you if you're in the process of adopting the martech stack do it fast uh, speed there is important um you know and i'm i'm going to stop here i can give you tons of you know experiences from uh, my personal life more but i think um, you know the ones that i shared are extremely important uh, some of the relationships that cmos need to build up with their cfos and the cios um and i think that is also a mantra uh, you know uh, for uh, uh, success so uh, marketing budgets are not a constraint is the last thing I want to say if you're delivering ROI to the organization. I've been asked very often saying, take more money, give us more business, you know. Uh, so uh, look at that. Hire well is another thing if you're a leader inside, uh, you know, the marketing organization. These three A's, by the way, they keep me on my toes. Uh, I constantly evaluate what I'm doing both and work, both at work and my personal social media. Uh, so I'm 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 going to stop here, Dr. Nagedra, as we had decided, uh, you know, and sure. I'm going to see if there are any questions. Uh, there are or... quite a few. I think uh, maybe with your permission, let me start with the first one. Uh, Great. So begin, yes. uh, for, for a want of time. Yes. I think there's a question. Uh, first question is uh, uh, from Gaurav Pandey. And uh, this is uh, in reference to your um, authenticity a bit, Dipali. Uh, his question is, but ma'am, don't you think people have become very smart to realize that a buffer is being taken during a promise? I think when you're making a reference to under promise and over deliver kind of thing. Say that again, the last bit I lost. When you're doing uh, pe uh, you know, uh, people have become, don't you think uh, people have become uh, very smart to realize that a buffer is being taken during promise? So that's right. And they've always been smart, by the way. And let me give you an example. Remember, I told you that I worked extensively in hair care. No woman ever believes that the glory uh, of, you know, of the hair is going to, they, her hair is going to look like this as she sees in the magazine ad when she looks at a shampoo or a hair color or, a, a, you know, even a hair oil ad. She knows it, okay? And yet she buys into it. So uh, that radar uh, consumers have always had. But I think when I talk about authenticity, that's not what matters. It's the consistency bit also that matters, you know. And do you put your money where your mouth is in terms of when there's a complaint, when there is a issue, you know, uh, and brands do take, uh, you know, uh, grand decisions to ensure that their brand authenticity, uh, you know, is maintained. Is your new customer experience creation guided by what you define, uh, you know, uh, as being authentic. So that's what, so, you know, brand claims are a very small subset of, subset of what I mean when I say authentic brand and authentic organizations. Uh, Dr. Nagendra, I hope I've kind of answered that question. Yes. And uh, before we go to the next question, I think this is a great compliment to you mm -hmm. by Nikhil Jain. Thank you, Nikhil. And his compliment is amazing portfolio, ma'am. It is even larger than the entire syllabus of MBA. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and yes, you know, uh, I do enjoy teaching. In fact, I'm doing the full digital marketing course at NMIMS. I just finished, I finished teaching that in Feb end. And I've enjoyed myself, I, you know, I, uh, uh, by doing the full course, because it's nice when you guys ask the questions and students ask the questions, because I'm able to bring in examples from different industry and correlated. But I really appreciate that comment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you so much. And this is a question from Saurav, uh, Sovik Roy, sorry. Uh, and uh, his question is, after uh, hearing such a great profile, first question which is striking my mind is, any tips on time management? Thank you, Sauvik. <laughs> uh, don't sleep less. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's, a, it's about priority and prioritizing. Um, I think I didn't feel the pinch till uh, uh, the time when it was just husband and wife. But when my son came into my life, I think I felt the pinch. However, uh, you know, I still think quality time matters. Uh, but having said that, uh, you know, am I prioritizing this session over a four hour long movie uh, and dinner, uh, you know, that I go to a mall and hang out, you know, uh, once in a while. I think that bit is important. I'm not saying I don't spend time with my son, but do I do it over a movie or do I do over anything else, you know? Uh, do I utilize my team time well when I'm traveling in the car? I used to have a strict policy before COVID that I would do social media only in the car while traveling. You know, I would utilize my time by fixing calls and doing it. Uh, you know, during my flights, I read. Um, you know, during my flights, I've already downloaded things that I want to watch, 
uh, you know, so it's about being smart. It's about uh, looking at your calendar and saying these are the important jobs that need to be done. And I plan. It's not about just filling the calendar. It's also about planning. Um, I must also say this, that I since the last five, uh, six years, I work with a coach. Um, and, uh, you know, the coach also keeps me in, on my toes by asking me, what do you want to achieve in life and what's important? And are you doing something on a daily basis? Suppose I catch up with the coach once a month or once in 15 days, you know, did I do something uh, from an important perspective? Because a lot of the times urgent takes over the important. Uh, just sharing some tips, uh, Dr. Nagendra. Thank you so much, Deepal. I think there's another question from Melinda Narvatka. And his question is how marketing in product based organization is different than those for tech consulting companies. As a consultant in pre sales, what should be our approach for marketing in software products? Long question, Milin, but uh, I'm two sure you have Two questions, actually. It's company. not yeah, one. Yeah. Two, two yeah. questions. Let exactly. me ask the first bit. See, one is we could do a two hour lecture in me to, exp uh, you know, and is required perhaps to explain what the differences are. And there are, you know, there's no, no doubt in my mind. But at the heart of it, uh, if you want to succeed, you know, each of the places, what is very important is do the customer journey today. So I'm giving you a secret source of success. Do the customer journey. Understand how the customer uh, finds out information about your brand, forms impression about your brand and product, and then comes and buys. Or even sometimes a post sale because retention, customer lifetime value, all that is becoming important. And then marketing's job is to do the nudges you know, from the brand perspective, pricing perspective, product perspective. It should not matter whether it's a technology product or financial services or credit card. Once you do this customer journey, you will get the points where you can make an impact and make a difference in what are the points, uh, you know, which are very, uh, which are very important. So that's the answer to the first part. The second question, I've forgotten, what is it? Some pre-sales and yeah, consultant? As a consultant in pre-sales, what should be our approach for marketing in software products? Uh, know your products very well, know how to do, uh, if you are a pre-sales person, okay, if you are a pre-sales person, know your customer very well, know points of objection very well, focus on the products which are giving you greater margins, be friends with your marketing team and understand what they're doing, be very responsive, uh, you know, to marketing campaigns. I would say some of the basics of being a professional, uh, you know, I don't think this is really a marketing question in that sense, Dr. Nagendra, unless of course I've understood it very wrong. By the way, I'm happy to continue conversation with any one of you on Twitter. Uh, I have a set of friends who enjoy the marketing conversations on Twitter. Dipali Nair is my handle. Nair is spelled with double A. Quite happy to continue the conversation on Twitter. Absolutely. Great. So let me have uh, you know, a few more questions, uh, uh, Dipali. So one, the next question is uh, from Nirja Navani. And her uh, question is, in fact, nothing to do with the marketing, but then she wants uh, so, you know, a suggestion from you. Any book recommendation for non-marketer who is transitioning from tech to marketing? Thank very, you, Nirja. Very good question. Thank you. I would recommend you to read some of the classics in marketing. Uh, if you search on the internet, uh, uh, Marketing Myopia by Theodore Levitt. Also, you can put down Ted Levitt. If I'm not wrong, it was published in the 70s in HBR. Read that article. Uh, the book that I recommend is uh, Blue Ocean Strategy. Uh, uh, they've written two. The authors have written two. The first one, Blue Ocean Strategy. It's also an article once again in HBR. Okay. Um, then the third book that I recommend is Building Strong Brands. Uh, now, these are not tech marketing oriented suggestions that I've made. They are marketing oriented suggestions that I've made because I consider these three to be like the Bible of what marketing is all about. And then, you know, revisit what I said, which is, um, you know, look at the customer journey. Uh, even if you're not in marketing, look at the customer journey and see, you know, what's happening. And then the last one is the Pali's three years framework. Remember, Authenticity, agility, and ability. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Dipali. The next question is from Sudeep Sen uh, Sarma. And his question is What are you seeing the changes in customers' or clients' behavior post COVID 19 and how marketing is aligned on this? Thank you, Sudeep. So, uh, you know, it's a very broad question because the customer is changing differently for different categories. Okay. Uh, so I don't have a straight shooting answer, but let's face it that I think uh, some of the things that are happening around us, uh, one is online payments is here to stay and therefore your customer journeys are very different today versus what they were earlier. And I don't think we are going back because digital payments is a convenient, uh, you know, way of doing business. So we, it's not like we're going to go back to the cash economy tremendously. So one is that societal change and, uh, you know, uh, customer journey change that you must look at. 
The second one change observation that I have is brands need to relook at what are some of their priorities. You know, they need to relook, for example, today all brands need to think I am chasing real estate on a mobile phone. This is not a concept that existed in marketing earlier. Now, you may be an Amazon and a Mintra and an Urban Ladder and a Swiggy and a Zomato, which means an ecosystem brand and maybe chasing the exact spot, you know, on the customer's phone. Or you may be a Lakme or a Pons or, a, a, you know, a Nike, and you may be chasing a spot inside, uh, you know, Amazon and inside Flipkart. So that brings in its own intricacies of ensuring that you're present in presence in the digital channels. You need to start looking at distribution and pricing very differently from a marketing perspective. So I think this is a very huge change. Now you can debate the numbers. You know, somewhere it is 10% contribution, 40% contribution, 50% market share from digital. I'm a completely online brand. But in, in the life of future, okay, you need to look at yourself from your digital footprint perspective and you need to chase the mobile uh, phone uh, real estate. I think this is a huge difference that we need to have in our mindsets. Thank you, Deepa. I hope I know that I addressed your question, uh, Sudeep. And this is a question from Pushpesha, and uh, it's quite a long one, but let me read it with your permission, uh, Deepali. And his question is, while you spoke about so much investment in marketing side of business, a lot of companies claim zero marketing spend while they talk about organic marketing, marketing through customers by word of mouth, and negligible spend through social media. Is this a real climb by big companies when there is so much competition and companies with considerable size marketing teams? How do they integrate this with other uh, functions or eliminate marketing function if it is real thing? Or is it just a eye washer or a uh, washer to claim they are too good to uh, need marketing investment? Thank you, Pushpa. Long question. <laughs> We're discussing semantics here, according to me. Okay. I myself told you this, that, you know, I did my podcast and we spent zero dollars on marketing. What that means is that we didn't do paid media. We did organic, of course, uh, you know. But understand this, that the app where my podcast is hosted already has 1 million users. Okay. And uh, it is doing, uh, you know, when you when you come into uh, the app, it will do suggestions to you on the basis of what you've listened earlier. So it will find people with, uh, you know, uh, interest there. And it will also do the top banners and it will also do notifications whenever a new episode goes there. Right. Now that in a way is marketing. But yes. You know, because I'm on a platform, because I did this thing of, you know, do I want to chase my own real estate on Spotify, which is so big? Or do I go to avas.com and do a tie up with them and do my podcast over there is the smart thing about it. Second example that I want to give is that, uh, you know, uh, Google may say that, you know, uh, we didn't spend any marketing to make Google engine very popular. They may be right. But I think the years and years of research and experience, the commitment to ensuring that the search is robust, the policies that they have, uh, the millions of professionals who work in Google who are not ROI oriented, who are just oriented in the KPIs about ensuring that search is better. Okay. Now that is an investment into product. And you have to consider that product is also part of the four P's of marketing. But yes, it's not a paid media spend. And therefore they're saying that we have not spent anything on marketing, I think is a better choice of words than saying we've not done marketing. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, things like Google, Wordle just now, for example, is all an example of word of mouth marketing, right? Actually, now this is a very interesting question, very small question from uh, Joyce Pillai. And uh, his question is, I think, you know, when you're referring to marketing solutions and your ability part of it. So his question is related to that piece. Uh, is, uh, he's asking about which MarTech solutions would you recommend for SMEs who are uh, getting for scale? I think that's a very unfair question to ask. I just said there are 8,000 marketing solutions, marketing solutions in the market. I don't even know which category you belong to. Okay. So uh, I think you need to sit down with an expert, spend uh, an hour or two talking to people in your category and industry, uh, speak to other SMEs and find out what they've adopted recently, the adoption trouble, size your, uh, you know, uh, your team, understand whether you want to outsource marketing or, you know, keep it in house. What is your growth ambition? And then, uh, then do this. I don't think the Pali will have a ready answer to this, which is why there are 10,000, uh, 8,000 solutions. 
because different solutions suit different kind of organizations. Now, this is a two part. One is uh, 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 you know, definitely complimenting you for uh, your three A's. Other one is a, a different question. This is from Ashish Moitra. And let me read out uh, for you, Dipali. His, question, his uh, first perspective is respected, ma'am. Really, you are practically demonstrate as you are authentic, agile, and the ability that you are handling the situation very well online webinar. Terrific demonstration. Thank you. Is spontaneity or over spontaneity pace in marketing? That's a question. Did you think less of me as a person because my son walked in and was, you know, creating a tantrum? Not at all. <laughs> and did I spontaneously manage that situation with you guys and with him? Very true. So, I think, you know, uh, so if you're talking about agility, I think spontaneity needs to be there. But, you know, don't bring it down to the level of saying my Twitter needs to respond to other brands. My brand handle needs to be spontaneous. It's not as simple as that, you know. Ultimately, agility is about spontaneity. You know, you are reacting to new things that are happening around you. So from a marketer's perspective, spontaneity is important. Otherwise, you'll be a very dull and a odd brand. But there is there is a place and there is a... There are some times when you need and be spontaneous. There are times when you need to go back and rethink and reflect long-term strategy also. I'll just leave it there. Sure. I think uh, the, uh, this is a uh, next question is from uh, Amit and um, um, Great things, Dipali. A big thanks for taking out time to share. And his question is, what would be your suggestion for Gen X to remodel career? Even today's generation is going to have multi multi-career streams or changes. How can people in 40s catch uh, to such trend learn and learn your views on recommendations please so you know there is a, a book written by rita megra she's a professor at columbia university uh her uh the book name is the end of competitive advantage i think i don't know if i have it here okay uh the, the last chapter in that book is very interesting so the first few chapters are about brands and organizations and she talks about you know uh, um you know how nokia won where kodak lost and the you know blackberry in the technology space and a lot of categories have just fallen by the wayside right the last chapter in her book is about managing your career if brands have a short-lived life then careers also have a short-lived life and that is why my tenet, tenet of agility for the personal brand also stands you need to learn unlearn relearn whatever you want to call it but there's another theory from the hr side uh, you know that i want to tell you Students who are passing out today will need to retool themselves three times in their careers, in their lifetime. Uh, a singular career where you're not constantly uh, learning new things, where you continue to do the same thing, will have a life only of about 10 years. Then you will need to go back to college and start again afresh. Uh, so that's the theory that's going. So I think I don't want to I don't want to retool myself and start a fresh career every 10 years. So I better learn. Um, uh, I better focus on skill learning uh with every new job uh you know my suggestion to you would be that we we're very hard negotiators saying Achha, designation is going up money is going up in the new job you know etc etc ask yourself are you adding skill sets to your cv with this new job that's extremely important absolutely absolutely i think that's where i think howard gardner you know multiple intelligence model works i think that's some of the best business schools and also universities actually we insist on you know uh, mapping students uh, across this multiple intelligence model because like you rightly said i think earlier uh, generations might have had only one career in their lifetime but i think uh, this generation might have three careers in their lifetime that's okay either way you look at it you know his uh, next question is from nasra zizaz and her question is ma'am what is your uh, idea of work-life balance that you believe in thank you nasrat so don't look at work-life balance from an every week perspective okay uh i find it very silly that people say i want to be free on sundays i don't know in a lifetime how many sundays are there will somebody do this calculation please uh i think there will be uh, 52. Uh, 52 in a right. year and if i live a hundred year life then 5200 sundays i mean <laughs> really <laughs> okay i don't think that's important i think the importance the uh, the way i look at my life is that there are times, look at it from a block of five years. There are times when your child is young and you want to focus on the child and does your work allow you to do that? There are times when your parents are unwell and you want to do elder care. 
you know there are times when you give birth to a child and you can't go back to work and can you afford to take a year off you know um whether your company allows you to do it but are you mentally prepared for it i'm the kind of person who is 100% in all the time okay so when i had my son um, you know uh, he was slightly unwell i took a year off and uh, recently in 2016 my mother was unwell i took 10 months off um i've done two working sabbaticals and uh, i've rejoined i've not rejoined the same organizations i quit my job totally free from the mind you know i was doing some consulting work during that time and then i came back but i don't uh, like i said i don't look at this you know i need to be free on a sunday and therefore i will not do this thing on the weekend you know uh, uh my request to you is to look at your work life balance in blocks where you say there's an emergency at work what does that mean i'm doing a new product launch you know there is some change that's happening at work appraisal time you know annual target setting time and therefore work requires my attention versus this my son's exam time which happens every year you know or that you know my mom's appointment with the doctors and those kind of things or you know my health may need attention you know can i do it during those time and the answer there is not in managing your calendar the answer there is have you built support structures at home and do you have relationships at home which support you when you are when you're needed at work and have you built structures at work you know which support you when you're required at home i think uh, that to me and delegate learn to delegate i think lots of people don't delegate in fact there's a question on that delegation uh, uh, dipali maybe let me pick up that question as a, in a follow up question on this and here, this question is from madhu ji and uh, thank you so much for wonderful insights i would like to ask uh, how do you manage team and uh, delegate that requires a master class of maybe <laughs> four to five hours and but i want to tell you that i know how to do it okay when i joined ibm there was a void uh my team's employee engagement scores were all in reds one of the low reds means you know below benchmark really needs work you know probably the lowest in two years time in november 2020 uh, despite uh, covid uh, the team score was the it's on an index of 100 so it's a score out of 100 96.4 wow. highest in the world in the ibm system uh, and of course all deep greens which means benchmarked with the best in the industry okay uh, so i know a bit about it you need to focus on culture you need to focus on team management you need to focus on leadership this lot of material uh, you know that can be read and there is a lot of you know uh, theories and principles but execution is a little tough not every leader does it i've uh, also must commit uh, and uh, commend uh, my coach uh, remember i told you into uh, when i was doing my sabbatical uh, that is the time i started working with a coach by the way uh, my coach has helped me grow as a leader uh, tremendously uh, you know uh, she keeps me in line <laughs> let me put it that way uh, sorry but you know short answer to a question uh which requires a much much longer uh, answer it's 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 on the leadership space uh, dr nagendra i think it requires a different uh, two hour lecture or a, or an hour long lecture on uh, you know culture building uh, and so on and so forth i also noticed that we are at 7 pm uh, are there too many more questions there are almost about um, 30 more questions i don't think you will have time but i would uh, definitely request all of them to transition to your twitter handle absolutely think- and let's do it over the weekend don't wait for monday please okay and don't don't expect me to do it just now but you want to get on to the twitter tonight let's say at around 10 10:30 pm this is saturday night i i don't intend sleeping early let's get on to twitter let's do an engagement i will get in other cmos and other you know leaders with tons and years of marketing experience to also comment on your questions okay find i think my with your permission uh, yeah i'll just take one question from uh, yes. pogila uh, gopalan i think that, that will be the last question with your permission yes. thanks for uh, such a wonderful perspective ma'am your energy is so infectious what are some of the challenges you faced as a leader in transitioning into different domains in your career thank you kogila thank you i had to work very hard i must admit uh but i am i have a learning bone in my body so i will say that i like learning new things but you asked me about the challenges i think the challenges were not uh, transitioning into the new job i i enjoy that process uh the challenges have been very different you know i think um after 
you know the whole lehman brothers and everything that happened uh indian organizations have also learned that you can actually uh, you know uh, uh, short size and sack people if you ask me the toughest part of my job is still uh, you know telling somebody that you know uh, we are downsizing and that's a reality it's a very practical reality and it is tougher because you know these are people who are great at their jobs it's just that the company is downsizing and that i find to be the toughest part of my job um the rest uh, i think is uh, maintaining uh, daily positivity maintaining the energy you know being resilient being okay with failures sometimes uh, you know uh, i think uh, those are the challenges and you know despite everybody else telling me that i do a great job of time management i still find i still come from this context that i wish i had 48 hours in a day <laughs> and i i have lot i have i have a long job list of things that i want to do i have books on my shelf that i haven't read uh, you know so uh, tons and tons of things to do those are my challenges i think thank you so much i think now that we have uh, just passed uh, the last question and like i said we almost have about 30 more and uh, um, you know thank you so much the party for your uh, you know time and the most important thing is it's uh, definitely very authentic because um, i think um, you know it was so uh, authentic in the sense that it was so uh, it was a very candid conversation like if i can borrow uh, right. you know jack wells uh, one of the phrases being uh, candid is one of the you know core values that he always driven in his yes. employees i think uh, today's conversation is nothing less than that you know that candid conversation but i'm sure uh, you know uh, the participants and all of our learners would uh, chase you on your twitter handle with all the questions not they but also be part of your podcast uh, also so i want and to say this uh, you know two people asked me this question one is on the challenges and the earlier question that i got asked was on uh, uh leadership and delegation and team management tips okay these are the kind of topics that i'm managing in my podcast so 31 episodes uh, that's about 15 to 16 hours of listening um ceos have shared you know when do they feel vulnerable what are their challenges um you know how did they transition that, to new jobs is, uh, sorry dr nagendra no i'm sorry sorry yeah i recommend really listen to the podcast being ceo with dipali nair uh, you will hear it not just from me you will hear me summarizing the lessons but uh, hear it from uh, various other leaders and very uh, uh, i i really admire every single one of the ceo who's come on to my podcast uh, so listen to them thank you dr nagendra thank you for inviting me thank I you so much myself. and thank you for so much love and appreciation with through all your comments and questions i truly appreciate it and let's continue the conversation on twitter thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much and thank all the participants and wonderful audience and uh, thank you for your uh, participation as well and extremely sorry that we couldn't accommodate all of your questions because of time but i'm sure and now you have another chance a bigger chance to uh, in, get engaged with uh, dipali and uh, get immersed in her illustrious experience uh, and have a great evening once again thank you so much dipali from all of us and we'll get, definitely love to host you in uh, our office uh, one of these days once another pandemic situation improves in mumbai Thank, Thank you so you. much and have a great evening. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks.